Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Lord, you said in your word, as you've called us to maturity in Hebrews chapter 6, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. Oh Lord, here we are. We want to grow in the grace and knowledge of who you are, but we can't do it without you. Therefore, we call for that intimate fellowship as we draw closer to you in relationship so that we can abide in you and you can abide in us so that we may bear much fruit. For without you, Lord God, we have absolutely nothing, absolutely diddly squat. But with you, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Therefore, because we are now seated in heavenly places and we have access to come boldly before your throne, I pray that you would pour out an anointing upon everyone who calls upon your name in faith, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. I pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit like never before upon all born-again believers. I pray that you would fill us so much that our cup would run over so that people would see the good work that you are doing in us and glorify you, our great Father in heaven. Lord, fill us with the seven spirits of God, the spirit of yod heh vav -He, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Here we are before your throne, asking you, Lord God, knowing that you've already answered our prayers because we believe by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please you. So we thank you in advance, O Lord. Now may our ears be open, our hearts be wide to receive everything that you will pour down from above, which is every good and perfect gift. Oh, how we love you, Lord, and we give you all the praise. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem in the name above all names, we ask it all. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Well, hallelujah, saints of God. Thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open. Everything will change. And if you are listening to this message and you have not called upon the name of Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, the first thing that you must do is call upon his name. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The time is ticking so fast and the time is really, really, really so short. Therefore, make today the day of your salvation if you will hear his voice and you will be in the kingdom of God forever. Amen. Saints of God, hallelujah. I'm just so blown away as my. Brother Daniel Zechariah likes to always say, I'm blown away at just how manifold the wisdom of God is. It's just like, it's just really mind blowing. I mean, there's there's not even like, there's not a word in our vocabulary that can really conceptualize just, just the magnitude of how great God is. It's just absolutely amazing. It's like, <laughs> let me be... Let me let me let me say it like this. It's like you, it's like you you you've seen a glimpse of the glory, but you haven't seen all the glory yet. I mean, it's just like there's always more to see, it's, <laughs> and it's amazing. And then when God gives you the more to see, it's just like it's just like whoops upside your head, you know, whoops upside your head with the download of absolute infinite holy wisdom and knowledge and understanding that's just so profound that you just marvel and that's what it means to be in the fear of the lord you're in awe you're in reverence you know you just reverence the lord and like only god only god can do something like this and wow wh i hope that you're just blown away by this just as i was blown away by this because you know it's just so fascinating to me i just find such delight in getting to know the lord jesus christ and just the intricacies of his word and how everything is just so well put together that no one can 
Uh, no one, no human being could ever write this book from their own understanding. This book is God breathed. I mean, there's no way. There's absolutely no way all this can make this much sense. No matter which place you look at in the Old Testament, the New Testament, everything fits. Everything is a, a type and a shadow. Everything is a is is pointing to Jesus Christ. Everything is telling the same story. And just watch when you see this teaching, because I, I'm pretty sure uh, you'll be blown away too. You see, but we have to go to maturity. We have to, we have to, you know, we got to put down that warm bottle of milk. And yeah, I love to drink the warm bottle of milk. You know, I, I like to, I like the milk. Hallelujah. Because that's the foundations of our faith. But you know, as Paul admonished us, well, we don't know if it was Paul, but the writer to Hebrews, the writer to the Hebrews admonished us in Hebrews chapter six, you know, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that, you know, we have to go on to maturity. You know, we have, we have to, if God permit, hallelujah, you see, because some people, you know, they're just stuck on the milk and hey, that's, if you're stuck on the milk, okay, praise God, we're in the same family, you know, but in the house, as God says, there, there's, there's many vessels, <laughs> there's many vessels, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. And, you know, some vessels uh, of honor are, 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 filled up even more because God is able, hallelujah, because uh, we want to be used by him and therefore we want to draw closer to him, hallelujah. And so we have to go on into uh, maturity, you see, but that maturity, you know, um, doesn't happen at once, just like a baby doesn't become a child and then uh, to an adult unless they go through stages of development. And so, you know, God is our heavenly father. You know, he, he, he's a, he's an awesome, wonderful and loving God. And he, he nurtures us and he, he guides us along this path. And it's just amazing how much patience he has with us. And so, uh, we got to get out our knives and forks. We got to sit down at this table, this buffet, my goodness, look at this teaching. I mean, I'm, I'm just absolutely stunned by, you know, just, <laughs> Uh, how awesome this is, you know, in the word of God. And as God says, you know, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the honor of kings to search it out. And hey, guess what? We're king's kids. Hallelujah. We are kings. Hallelujah. We are a kingdom of uh, priests uh, and we are united as one with the king of kings. Hallelujah. He's the head. We're the body. And we have been given an invitation to dive in and go deep into the word of God. And we got to get our scuba gear on. Hallelujah. You see, we just can't uh, uh, paddle upon the surface. I mean, you can, and Hey, you're saved. You're in the, you're in the boat. Hallelujah. You're saved sign in. Uh, 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 your name is in the land's book of life, which is the most important thing. Hallelujah. But you know, there's some people that want to go just a little bit deeper. Hallelujah. We want to go down and we want to dive down into the Mariana Trench, okay? <laughs> we want to get down in the waters, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, we want to go down deep into the waters. My goodness, let's go diving, okay? You see? And the invitation from God is always come. <laughs> he says, come, you know, whosoever will let them come, come and dine. Okay. So uh, uh, tuck your napkin into your collar. Okay. If you want to put your napkin on your lap. Okay. Uh, get out your knife and fork and let's dig in into this meat. Okay. Let's dig into this buffet because this is just so amazing. So we're going to talk about, as you see the title, the story of 666, the tribes of Asher and Naphtali. And so we can't limit the Holy One of Israel, okay? We have to have his mind. And the way that we have his mind is by being born again. And so now that we're all, we all have the mind of Christ, we can understand the, the absolute infinite levels that God is speaking on in order to appreciate how God tells us the end from the beginning. And so I want to show you this through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can see the end times played out right from the beginning. And we can see the hidden mystery of 666 and how it's connected to the tribes of 
Naphtali, and Asher. And so uh, before we get to this, let me just show you this. Okay, we got we to gotta understand why I say 666. Okay, so in the Hebrew gematria, every letter in the Hebrew gematria is also a number. And so when you take a name of a person and you add up that value of that name, according to the number that corresponds to each letter, you'll get a, a numerical value, okay? And so in all of the Bible, okay, you could do this yourself. You can, you can do this yourself, okay? This, is, this isn't like, you know, any hidden wisdom. This is, this is uh, verifiable information that anyone can understand now because now we have the tools. We're going to and fro in the Bible. Okay, we're going up and down the Bible. We're going here, there, and everywhere in the Bible because we have the tools, the technology to do it. And so you can go in this program and you can type in 666 and you will find just two people, two people in all the Bible who have the numerical value of 666. And I've done a couple of teachings on the first person. His name is Sether. His name is Sether and uh, you can find him in Numbers chapter 13, verse 13. He was one of the 10 spies who brought back the evil report. So let's click on his name. We got to build this foundation. Hallelujah. So Sether, he was from the tribe of Asher and his name means hidden. So the name of Sether actually means hidden. And he was one of the 10 spies who brought back an evil report. Okay, when it was time for the children of Israel to take possession of the promised land, after God had miraculously delivered them from Egypt and from slavery, they crossed the Red Sea. God destroyed all of the Egyptian army. And so now the children of Israel were set free and they were told to go and take possession of the promised land and don't be afraid because God was with them. But of course, as you know, there, there was an evil report as God commissioned 12 spies to go out into the promised land to scout it out for 40 days and uh, 10 of the 12 spies brought back an evil report we know that the only good report came from joshua and caleb and that's a story in and of itself but i want to i don't want to go down that rabbit trail right now i want to stick with sether so sether was from the tribe of asher his name means hidden and the numerical value of his name when you take the Letters of uh, Samic, Tav, Vav, and Resh. Samic is 60. Tav is 400, so that's 460. Uh, the Vav is 6, that's 466. And then the Resh is 200. So 466 plus 200 is 666. Okay, so Sether is the first name in all the Bible whose numerical value equals 666 and he is from the tribe of asher okay and so now there's only one other person there's only one other person in all the bible whose name equals 666 and this is jeremoth okay jeremoth jeremoth is the other person and we're going to focus on this guy uh because he is going to represent the false prophet, okay? So Sether represents the Antichrist. He represents the first beast in Revelation. Okay, Revelation chapter 13, there's two beasts. One beast is from the sea, and another beast is from the earth. So uh, the beast from the sea appears first, okay? And so understanding the typology, we see that the first person who has the number 666, Sether, who had the evil report, he's going to represent that first beast, the Antichrist. Because what is the Antichrist going to do? Well, he's going to come with an evil report. He's going to come with an evil report. And that's the covenant of death that is spoken about in Daniel chapter 9, uh, 27, when he makes a covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of that week, he's going to break it. And so that's the evil report. Okay. And so Sether is in charge of that evil report. So he represents the antichrist so he represents the first beast okay this first beast that comes from the sea he's represented by sether in the old testament okay so now the second one who comes from the earth in revelation chapter 13 is the false prophet 
okay? And the false prophet, um, what does he do? Well, he is the one who points everyone to worship the Antichrist, and he also is the one who performs great signs by calling down fire from heaven. And he's also the one who gives life to the image of the beast after he tells the people of the earth to make an image to the beast. And he's also the one who causes everyone on the planet that's left behind in the cloudy and dark day that they have to take a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And without it, no one can buy or sell. And then uh, the number of the mark is 666. Okay, so uh, this second beast who comes from the earth, which we know as the false prophet, okay, he, 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 he's a... a he he's a he, he's a character okay he's a character okay okay he he's a he, i mean you start to go deep into this i mean this guy he even seems more wicked than the antichrist when you like really go in deep into this uh, but of course they're on the same uh, plane because the dragon is the one who who is behind them both okay and so uh, uh we see in the shadow, that the second person, there's only two people, there's only two names in all of the Bible whose names equal 666. The first one is Sether, he represents the Antichrist, and the next one is Jeremoth. And Jeremoth, there's seven different Jeremoths, okay? So here we're gonna, we're gonna go a little bit deeper, okay? So if you type in Jeremoth, you'll find that there's um, actually eight different Jeremoths. Eight different Jeremoths in the Bible. Okay, so there's eight different Jeremoths in the Bible. But when you look at it, each time this Jeremoth, the eight different Jeremoths that are mentioned in the Bible, when you look at each different uh, passage of Scripture where this different Jeremoth is mentioned, and you look at the Hebrew, you will see that in the passage, the name Jeremoth in the original text doesn't equal 666. For example, let's click on this first one. Okay, so you got to follow this teaching. Help us, Holy Ghost. So the first time there's a Jeremoth mentioned is in 1 Chronicles 7.7. 7. Now, check this out. I'll say, let's click on this. So we go to 1 Chronicles 7.7. 7. Okay, so this Jeremoth without... um without any conjugations to his name, his name is 666. But when you go to the original text, when you go into how it's written in the in the scroll, when you see the name Jeremoth, there's a conjugation next to his name. And we see his name right here. Okay, and there's a Vav added to Jeremoth. So instead of Jeremoth equaling 666 in the original text, this Vav is added to his name because uh, the Vav is a connection, so it means and, and Jeremoth. So the value changes from 666. Now, because this Vav is added to it, it equals 672. Okay, so if you're looking at an original Torah scroll and you go to this place in the scripture, okay, in First Chronicles 7-7, seven, seven, you'll see this Vav connected to the name Jeremoth. So in the original scroll, the value of Jeremoth isn't 666 because there's a Vav connected to it. So actually, your his value is 672, okay? And that's the same case for all these other ones except for one. And this is the key. Out of the eight different Jeremoths that are mentioned, there's only one of the Jeremoths whose name, when you look at the original text, if you take out a scroll and you look at that scroll and you're looking at it in the Hebrew, there's only one out of these eight Jeremoths whose name in the original text in the scroll will have Jeremoth just by itself, which equals 666. And so we have to focus on that Jeremoth in order to understand the message that God has given us. And we find that Jeremoth in First Chronicles chapter 27, verse 19. Okay, in First Chronicles chapter 27, verse 19, we see Jeremoth. Okay, a different Jeremoth. 
And if you go to the original text, you'll see that there's nothing added to his name. Okay, right here. There's nothing added to his name. So if you're looking at 1 Chronicles 27, verse 19, in the original Torah scroll, in a scroll written in Hebrew, there's nothing added to his name. There's no conjugations. So you would see Jeremoth, and if you know the Gematria, and all Jewish people know it, you would just value, total up his name, and his name would equal 666. Let's do it together. So you got a Yod, which is 10. You got the Resh, which is 200, so that's 210, plus another Yod, which is uh, 10, so that's 220. Then you got uh, the Mem, which is 40, so that's uh, 260. Um, then you got the Vav, which is 6, so that's 266. Then you got the Tav, which is 400. So 400 plus 266 is 666. Amen? So we found the Jeremoth. So now we have to focus in on why this Jeremoth is singled out. Why this Jeremoth is singled out from all the different other Jeremoths that are mentioned in Scripture. Why is it just this one whose name in the original text in the in an original Torah scroll, why is his name the only one that doesn't have any conjugations added to it that will change the numerical value of his name? Well, God wants us to dig. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to search it out. So let's go to the context of why this Jeremoth, who's of the tribe of Naphtali, is mentioned. Okay, because God is going to have a treasure hidden here for us to understand the end time. So let's go to First Chronicles 27. Okay, this is where we find this Jeremoth at. So First Chronicles 27 is all about the military divisions in service of King David. Okay, okay. So we see verse one, First Chronicles 27, and the children of Israel, according to their number, the heads of fathers' houses, the captains of thousands and hundreds. And their officers served the king in every matter of the military divisions. These divisions came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year, each division having 24,000. So God is telling us that this chapter is all about people who were in service to the king. Okay, and the king at this time was, of course, King David. Okay, so... We jump down to where we find Jeremoth, and we see he's a leader of a tribe, okay? And so we stop here at verse 16, uh, 1 Chronicles 27, verse 16. Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, the officer over the Reubenites was Eleazar, the son of Zichri. Over the Simeonites, Shephatiah, the son of Maacah. Over the Levites, Heshabiah, the son of Kimuel. Over the Aaronites, Zadok. Over Judah, Eliahu. One of David's brothers over Issachar, Omri, the son of Michael. And here we go, verse 19. Over Zebulon, Ishmaiah, the son of Obadiah. Over Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azriel. Okay, so this is where we find the Jeremoth at. This is where we find the Jeremoth at that has no conjugations to his name. In a Torah scroll, if you were reading it in Hebrew right here, you would see Jeremoth all by itself, and his numerical value will be 666. So the context of where he appears at is in service to the king, okay? And he was a leader over the tribe of Naphtali. Okay, so now God is telling us, go to Naphtali, okay? Because Jeremoth is connected to Naphtali. Jeremoth, this Jeremoth is 666. Okay, so before we go there, let me show you one thing. I want to show you what the name of Jeremoth means. Okay, so what does the name of Jeremoth mean? Because this is all going to be an avalanche of wow. Okay, look at this. The name of Jeremoth means what? Reign of death. Okay. <laughs> The name of Jeremoth means reign of death, and it also has to do with elevation in high places. And so look at this. Let's just read a brief summary. 
There are eight men in the Bible with the name Jeremoth. Okay, and so we went over those eight. Okay, and we singled out the only one, the only one whose name in the original text has nothing conjugated to his name. So his name in an original Torah scroll will equal 666. And this is the one who is the son of Azrael, the chief of Naphtali, found in uh, 1 Chronicles 27, 19, who was in service to King David. Okay, that's the Jeremoth that we're looking at. Out of all the other ones, this is the only one whose name is going to equal 666 when you look at it in the original text. So this is the one that God wants us to dig into to find out why. Why this one and why the tribe of Naphtali? Okay, so uh, let's go again to a little uh, bit further to see his name, what it means. Okay, so the name of Jeremoth has to do uh, has to do with meaning uh, of height. Okay, so his name means elevation, high places, or lifting up. Uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, link this article for you in the comment box. So you can read it through it yourself. But uh, there's a deeper meaning to that, and this is what he goes over. However, it seems that this name contains something of a play on words. Jeremoth can also be seen as being drawn from the word, the verb yara, meaning to cast or shoot. Okay, and so he goes on to conclude, and that means that the name of Jeremoth may also be seen as to mean reign of death. Okay, so uh, the name of Jeremoth means reign of death. Okay, so maybe let me just make this connection before we go over to Naphtali to see why. Okay, so remember the two beasts. Okay, the two beasts at the end times are connected to the number 666. The first beast, Antichrist, we saw him as Sether, okay, the one who had the false report in Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13, Sether, okay, he had the false report, and he was from the tribe of Asher, okay, he represents the first beast. And so the second beast is Jeremoth, who has the value of 666 as well. Okay, and Jeremoth is what? His name means reign of death. Okay, and what does the false prophet do? He rains down fire from heaven. Okay, verse 13, Revelation chapter 13. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Okay, and so check this out. Let me make this connection as well. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Antichrist, this beast from the sea, who in the Old Testament, is represented by Sether, okay? Sether who had the evil report, okay? Sether who had the evil report in Numbers chapter 13, we see him right here, Numbers chapter 13, uh, verse 13, uh, from the tribe of Asher, Sether, the son of Michael. Sether is the only one, he, he, his name, uh, Sether, there's only one Sether in all the Bible. Okay, there's only one Sether in all the Bible. And uh, that Sether is right here. Okay, this is the only time, one occurrence. You see, one occurrence of this name, Sether. Only one occurrence in all the Bible. Okay, and so, uh, and his name means what? His name means hidden. Okay, his name means hidden. Okay, hidden right here, Sether. His name means hidden, okay? So he's the hidden one. And there's only one, there's only one Sether in all the Bible, okay? And he had the evil report, and his name means hidden. And the numerical value of his name is 666 from the tribe of Asher, okay? But how about Jeremoth? Okay, Jeremoth, there's eight Jeremoths in all the Bible, remember? There's eight Jeremoths in all the Bible. Uh, we see this right here. Uh, uh, Jeremoth, there's eight different Jeremoths in all the Bible, okay? And Jeremoth by itself is 666. And so we focused in on the one who in the original text 
has no conjugations next to his name. Therefore, he's the one that we have to single out to understand more about this Jeremoth. And he comes from the tribe of Naphtali as a leader who was in service to the king, to King David in 1 Chronicles 27 verse 19. And this is exactly what we see in Revelation chapter 13. Okay. In Revelation chapter 13, this second beast, he's in service to the king. Okay. The king of the north, this blasphemous king who is the antichrist. This second beast uh, points all worship towards the first beast. As we read the description, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So this second beast is directing all the world, everyone who's left behind, to worship the first beast. So he's in service to the first beast. Just like we read about this Jeremoth in 1 Chronicles 27. He was in service to the king. He was in service to the king. Okay. This is exactly the same type that we, this is the type that should play out in the Old Testament for it to match what God says in the New Testament revelation. Okay. This Jeremoth in the Old Testament, the only one who has 666 in the original text, was in service as a leader over the tribe of Naphtali to the king. And his name means reign of death. Okay. This is exactly what happens in Revelation chapter 13. The false prophet is in service to the Antichrist. And he is going to rain down death. Literally. Literally. It says it that he's going to perform great signs. Even making fire come down from heaven. And the people who are left behind are going to be deceived. It says it right here, verse 14. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs. Okay? He's raining down death. Because through his deception of calling down fire from heaven, people are going to be marveling over him. And what's he going to do? This false prophet is in the multiplication business. Okay, look at this. <laughs> He's in the multiplication business. There's eight Jeremoths mentioned in all the Bible. Eight different Jeremoths. Jeremoth has to do with a multiplication. Okay, there's Jeremoth is multiplying. Okay. There's eight different Jeremoths mentioned. Okay. What does the false prophet do? He's in the business of multiplication. He wants everyone to worship the first beast and he wants to multiply. He wants to multiply and he does this multiplication by telling everyone who's left behind that they got to take a mark. Okay. He wants everyone to receive the same image of the beast. Not only do you have to take this mark, but you also have to fall down and worship this beast, the image of the beast. He wants to multiply. Okay, that's why there's eight different Jeremoths in the Bible. That's another level of understanding. This Jeremoth, whose name means reign of death, he wants to multiply. Okay, he wants to multiply, multiply beast worshipers. Okay, <laughs> it's amazing to me, but that's not all. Let's get into this. Let's go even back further. Let's go to the tribes now, because look at this. Look at this. Look at how this plays out. Look at the story. Even the rapture is even hinted at in this. Look at this. We got to go all the way back to the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis. Because remember, the two tribes where these two people are found at, okay, the, two, the only two people in all the Bible whose name equals 666 are who? Sether and Jeremoth, okay? Sether and Jeremoth. And we already understand that Sether is from the tribe of Asher. So we got to look at the tribe of Asher. And we understand that the Jeremoth that we're focusing in on is the one who was the leader over the tribe of Naphtali. So let's go to Genesis to the birth of the children of Israel to see Asher 
and Naphtali. Now look at this, okay? Genesis chapter 30. This is why I had this graphic up at the beginning. Okay, because even the number six is connected to both of these tribes. The number six is connected to both tribes. Okay. Asher. Okay, so let's, 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 okay, well, let's, let's deal with the order of the birth first. Okay, so here we see a, a simple understanding. Okay, so this is the order of all the births of the children of Jacob. And so we see that Naphtali was the sixth son born. Okay, he was the sixth son born. And we can see this in Genesis chapter 30. Let's go through it real fast because, oh, there's just so much. Help me, Holy Ghost, to stay focused. Okay, so the first four sons were uh, born uh, to Leah and uh, with Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. That's found in Genesis chapter 29. So now Genesis chapter 30 begins, and it talks about how Rachel couldn't have any children yet. So what does Rachel do? Rachel gives her handmaid Bilhah to Jacob and then Jacob goes into Bilhah and so let's pick up right here at verse 3 so she said here is my maid Bilhah go into her and she will bear a child on my knees that I also may have children by her then she gave him Bilhah her maid as wife and Jacob went into her and Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son then Rachel said God has judged my case, and he has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore, she called his name Dan. Verse 7. And Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, With great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister. Indeed, I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. Okay, so there goes Naphtali. The sixth son born to Jacob. Now, I said that the number six is connected to both of these sons. Okay, because now check this out. Asher is also the sixth son because Asher was the sixth son of Leah through her handmaid Zilpah. Okay, so remember, um, the sixth son literally was Naphtali, okay? We just read that. But then, but Naphtali came from Rachel, okay? But after uh, Naphtali is born, then we read the story of how Leah now gives her handmaid Zilpah to Jacob, and Jacob now then goes into Zilpah, and she bears two sons for Leah, so in reality, Asher is the sixth son of Leah. So as you can see, the number six is connected to both Naphtali and to Asher. Both of these sons are from, are, are the two sons that are singled out where they will have descendants connected to the number 666. Asher would bear uh, Sether in the future, and Naphtali would bear Jeremoth in the future. Both of those sons would have the numerical value of 666. Okay, I pray that you got that. I pray that you understood that because now check this out. We're not done yet because look at this. Okay, so remember that I said we have to focus in on Naphtali. Okay, so Naphtali, oh, before I go there, <laughs> look at this. Help me, Holy Ghost. I mean, it's just so much. I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to remember everything. Help me, Holy Ghost. You see, because even the motif of the last will be first and the first will be last is being played out. Okay. The motif of the first will be last and the last will be first. We see this in Matthew uh, 19, verse 30. Okay. We see it four different times in the New Testament. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. Okay. Uh, we see this played out right here. Now look at this. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm sorry. It's just so much revelation that I'm trying to squeeze everything in because it's just blowing all, it's just blowing my mind. Okay. So the last will be first and the first will be last. Okay. So remember the order of the birth. Naphtali was born first. 
and then Asher was born. So what happens? Remember, Naphtali represents Jeremoth. Okay, Jeremoth is what? The reign of death, the false prophet. The last will be first and the first will be last. And so then Asher, who was born after Naphtali, represents Sether. Okay, so Asher represents Sether, the Antichrist, 666. So if the last will be first, what happens? Well, as we go further along in the story, who appears first? The last appears first because the first 666 that we come to is Sether from the tribe of Asher. Okay, the last will be first. And the first will be last because the next time we come to a 666 and after we come to Asher is uh, Jeremoth, who's from the tribe uh, of Naphtali. Okay, so we see that motif playing out right here. The last will be first and the first will be last. And as you can see, even in the order of the blessing, it's reversed. The last is first and the first is last. Okay, Asher appears first in the order of blessing. And then Naphtali appears, okay? The last will be first and the first will be last. God is showing us something, but that's not all. Hallelujah. Okay, so let me show you the rapture, okay? Because I want to show you this. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let me show you the rapture. So let's go back to Genesis. Okay, so you know how the end times is going to work out. We know that when uh, the rapture takes place, the Antichrist is going to be revealed. That's why he's hidden right now. So remember, remember who appears first. According to Revelation chapter 13, who appears first? It's the beast from the sea. Okay, the Antichrist appears first. All right, the Antichrist appears first. And who does the Antichrist represent in the Old Testament? He represents Sether. Sether, who was from the tribe of Asher, who had the evil report. So look at this. Look at the look at the birth order now, okay? Genesis chapter 30. Okay, so let's go to uh Asher. Okay, look at this. Praise God. Uh Genesis chapter 30, verse 9. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zilpah her maid and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, A troop comes, so she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid, Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy, for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. Okay, so there goes Asher. Okay, so who came from Asher? The Antichrist, right? Sether, 666. He appears first. Put your mind in the end time context now, okay? Put your mind in the end time context, everything we've been talking about. So here goes Asher. He's born now. And so what happens? Look, look what happens now. Verse 14, now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest. Okay, so there goes the wheat harvest. Okay, so when Asher appears, it's also going to be at the time of wheat harvest. Look at the, look at the shadow. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, you, you got you to have the mind of Christ to see this. I just get over it. I just go overjoyed, you know, just at the revelation. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just so marvelous. So we have Asher appearing which represents the Antichrist, Sether, who comes from Asher, Numbers uh, chapter 13, verse 13, Sether, the Antichrist, 666, the hidden one, here he comes, he's from the tribe of Asher. What happens? Verse 14, now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest. There's the wheat harvest, that's the rapture. And, and, and now look at this, now look at the story, look how, look how amazing God is. Now, now you got you to gotta put your mind in the end time context. Okay, so what's going to happen after we're out of here? Look who comes next, okay? Look who comes next. Okay, so now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest to rapture and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, therefore, he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, you must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. 
And God listened to Leah and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. Okay. So look at the shadow. We have Asher appearing, which represents the Antichrist. Sether, 666. The wheat harvest is also at this same time, the rapture. Okay, but there's people left behind. And who's the next person mentioned that's going to be left behind? Well, it's Issachar who was now born. Issachar is the one who was born. And so if you know your Bible, you know that there is a special blessing with the tribe of Issachar because they had understanding of the times. Okay, we see this in First uh, Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. Of the sons of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Okay, so Issachar represents those who have understanding of the times. Look at the shadow. Asher appears, okay, from, which, from where the Antichrist comes from, 666 Sether. At the time of the wheat harvest, the rapture is also taking place. Okay, the church is out of here, but there's people left behind. And God, who is the person uh, that's going to have understanding of the times? Well, Issachar is now born. Issachar is the first son born. Okay, Issachar is the first son born uh, after the rapture event at the wheat harvest. And uh, Issachar is said to have understanding of the times. Well, we know from Daniel when the Antichrist appears. There's going to be people who do have understanding of what's going on, but they're going to be put to death. Okay, we see this in Daniel chapter 11. Okay, Daniel chapter 11 begins at verse 21 with the rise of the Antichrist. And in his place shall arise a vile person to whom they will not give the honor of royalty, but he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. Okay, that's the Antichrist. That's Asher. That's uh, uh, Sether from the tribe of Asher, 666. OK, with the force of a flood, they shall be swept away from before him and be broken and also the prince of the covenant. And after the league is made with him, he shall act deceitfully. OK, so there goes that covenant of death. There goes that covenant with many that Daniel chapter nine, verse 27 talks about. For he shall come up and become strong with a small number of people. He shall enter peaceably. The Bible says he's going to destroy many by peace even into the richest places of the province. And he shall do what his fathers have not done, nor his forefathers. Okay, so this is the rise of the Antichrist right here. This is the rise of Sether, the hidden one. He's now on the scene. But guess what? Look down here in uh, Daniel chapter 11, uh, verse 32. This talks about Issachar. Those who have understanding of the times are going to be put to death because they've been left behind. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. And those of the people who understand Issachar shall instruct many. Yet for many days they shall fall by sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now when they shall fall, they shall be aided with a little help. But many shall join with them by intrigue. And some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. So here we see those who have understanding of the times, the Issachars, are going to be put to death. Okay, they're going to be put to death because they're not going to join with the covenant of death. And it's shadowed right here in Genesis chapter 30. It's just a mind blow of mind blows. Okay, I pray that you see it. Because I definitely see it, okay? And so we have the same thing that we know to be true as we take the whole Bible. We take every Bible. We take every verse in the Bible. We put it all together. We know the story. We know how everything's going to play out. We see that God is declaring unto us the end right here from the beginning. That's the amazing thing. When we could take everything that we know, we know how everything is going to work out, okay? And then we can go back to the beginning to test God to test him to see that his word will be true. And it's always going to be true. Hallelujah. You see, because God cannot lie. He says he declares the end from the beginning. 
and from ancient times, things not yet done, saying, His counsel shall stand, and he will do all of his good pleasure. Okay? So I pray that you got that. I pray that you got that shadow right here. Okay? Uh, but let's go back. I want to hit on a couple more things because I still want to focus on Naphtali. Okay? Because remember, Naphtali is from uh, where the false prophet comes from. Okay? Naphtali is from where uh, the false prophet comes from, uh, who is Jeremoth. Okay? Remember? Let's go back to... Uh, Let's go back to where I wanted to go to uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 27, verse 19, okay? 1 Chronicles chapter 27, verse 19. This is where we find the false prophet at, Jeremoth, okay? He's over, he's a leader of the tribe of Naphtali, okay? The son of Azrael, and what does he do? He's in service to the king. He's in service to the king. Now look at this, okay? Now look at this. Oh, okay, before I go there, let me show you this one thing. Look at the tribal allotments. Okay, so the furthest of the two tribes, the furthest of the two tribes, with the tribal allotments were who? Asher and Naphtali. They were the two northern tribes. Okay, Asher and Naphtali. Right here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Asher and Naphtali were the two northernmost tribes. This is exactly the description of the Antichrist and his henchmen, okay? Remember, in the book of Revelation, it says that there's a beast from the sea and the beast from the earth, okay? The beast from the sea, many people believe that means that he's going to come from the nations, okay? The Antichrist is going to be, he's going to come from the nations. And the Bible, in the book of Daniel, calls him the king of the north. So he's going to come from the north. Well, Asher and Naphtali were the two northernmost tribes. Likewise. Uh, the reason why people believe that the false prophet, the beast from the earth, he comes from the earth is because he actually comes from Israel. Okay, that's why he's called the false prophet. He comes from the earth. And so either way you cut the cake, it still matches because Asher and Naphtali both are the northern, northernmost tribes. And both of them are the only two tribes that have the 666 connected to them with the two people, Jeremoth from Naphtali and Sether from Asher, okay? It's, just, it's, it's amazing to me, okay? And they're the two northernmost tribes, and God says that the Antichrist is going to come from the north, the king of the north, okay? And so here he goes, okay? He, he's coming from the north, and he's going to come down, okay? And he's going to set his throne in Jerusalem. Woe be unto his soul forever, my goodness, and his henchmen, the false prophet. Woe unto their souls forever. They're going to the lake forever. God have no mercy on them. Oh, no. You see? Uh, but let me get back. Oh, it's just so much. You see, I, I, my mind is just so everywhere because it's just so much. There's just so many different connections. But let me go back to Naphtali because I want to show you this from numbers, okay? <laughs> this is amazing to me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Okay, so remember, Asher and Naphtali are connected. Now, would you believe, okay, <laughs> would you believe when you go back to Numbers chapter 13, okay, remember, the first time we come to a 666 is in Numbers 13 with Sether, who was the hidden one, okay, so let's go back here, now, look at this, I mean, this is just God, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is, this, is, this is only God, only God, okay, so check this out, Numbers 13, 13, from the tribe of Asher, Sether, the son of Michael. So we know that Sether is the 666. He's the Antichrist. Now, who's the next person mentioned? Verse 14, from the tribe of Naphtali, <laughs> Nabi, the son of Vapshi. Okay, so, I mean, just, I just, I just knew, I just, <laughs> I just knew it. I just knew it. There's going to be some type of revelation that's going to make me say, wow. And of course there is. Okay, so here we go. We have both tribes linked together again, okay? We got Asher, the 666 Sether, the Antichrist, and then right after him, we have the tribe of Naphtali, where we know from other scriptures that this is where the other 666 comes from, but let's focus in on who this person is, because he also had an evil report. 
Remember, the only two people that had the good report were Joshua and Caleb. Okay, all the other ten had a bad report, including this guy, Nabi. Okay, from the tribe of Naphtali. So what does his name mean? <laughs> and what's his numerical value? Oh, my goodness. Only God. Okay. That's why God wanted us to focus in on the tribe of Naphtali, because there's something to see there. Okay, so from the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vapshi, he also had a bad report. So I looked up what Nabi means, and guess what? His name also means concealed, hidden. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make it up even if you tried, okay? <laughs> so the very name of this man who was from the tribe of Naphtali, okay, the tribe that God wanted us to further inspect because there's something there, this guy, his name also means hidden, okay? Nabi, his name means hidden. And guess what? Guess what the value of his name is, okay? It's not 666, but I mean, it's still, it's still a mind bender. Hallelujah. Uh, because uh, look at this. Let's go to, let's go to uh, 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 this app. Uh, Numbers 13, 13. Let's go to the next verse over to the tribe of Naphtali. Nabi. Now look at his name. Nabi. His numerical value is 70. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you don't know what that means, I mean, I, 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 help us, Lord Jesus Christ. So here we go. His name means hidden, Nabi. Okay, look, here it goes, hidden. Okay, there's something hidden about him. Okay, he, ha he had the bad report. And guess what? His uh, gematria value is 70. Well, what are we waiting for? It's the 70th week of Daniel. When the 70th week of Daniel comes, these hidden ones, both Nabi and Sether, both of their names mean hidden. Both of them, their names mean concealed. The 666 will be revealed and the 70th week of Daniel will be manifested. Okay, it's just amazing to me. I mean, you, 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 who can write this? Who can write these types of things? Only a supernatural being who knows everything, okay? Who's God himself can do this, okay? This is this is just this is just like, you know, it's just like it's like the cherry on top of another cherry. I mean, it's just like, wow. I mean, I I, I don't know if you find these things interesting, but I mean, I, I'm just blown away. I'm absolutely floored by these types of things. I mean, it, it just it's just mind-boggling. Okay, so I pray that you got that. I pray that you got this amazing connections because this is God. This is God showing us how he's told us. I mean, this is, we're talking about, this is, this is, this is the book. This is the Torah we're dealing with. This, this is the, this is the Old Testament. There was no New Testament, but here we see God is working through these people telling his story that would one day be uncovered by those who diligently seek him at the time of the end because here we are at the time of the end and the 666 is about to be revealed okay these two people are about to be manifested the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth okay you see oh and guess what An another another thing i found fascinating was that uh this nabi He's the only one mentioned in the scriptures as well. Okay, this Nabi is the only one. Okay, we read right here. The name Nabi occurs only once in the Bible. Okay, just like his fellow counterpart, Sether. Okay, Sether and Nabi, uh, the, from the tribes of Asher and from the tribe of Naphtali. Both of their names mean hidden. Both of their names mean to conceal. And both of their names... Uh, have to do uh, with the end, okay? Because uh, God wants us to dig, okay? So I, I found this absolutely fascinating, okay? There's a, it's absolutely fascinating to me. And so finally, let me just end with this. Let's go to the let's go to the blessings, okay? Let's go to the blessings because we can see something again. The order of the blessings. Asher and Naphtali. Okay, so let's go to Genesis. And then I'll be done. And I pray that this, this teaching was edifying to you as it was for me. Uh, Genesis 
uh, chapter 49. Here goes the blessing. So here we see uh, Asher mentioned first. So remember, the last will be first and the first will be last. I already explained that. So here we got Asher first. Bread from Asher shall be rich, and he shall yield royal dainties. And then Naphtali is a deer let loose. He uses beautiful words. Okay, so that's the blessing. But remember, these two characters at the time of the end are bringing a curse. Okay. These two people at the time of the end are trying to reverse the blessing and they're going to bring a curse upon this world. And so Naphtali, Naphtali is going to use deceitful words because what does he do? Uh, the Jeremoth, who comes from the tribe of Naphtali, who equals 666, which represents the false prophet. Okay, the blessing of those who follow God is that those from the tribe of Naphtali use beautiful words. But this false prophet, he's going to use deceitful words because he's going to bring death. He's going to rain down death. And the Bible says uh, uh, this rain of death is going uh, to be caused because of the words he will use by even being able to give breath. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast, beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Okay, so here we see the total opposite of the blessing. Okay, the blessing was for Naphtali to use beautiful words. But here we see that the 666 Naphtali, from the, uh, the Jeremoth from the tribe of Naphtali, the 666, the reign of death, he's going to use his breath to cause death a reign of death, okay? He's going to tell fire to come down from heaven. He's going to tell the image of the beast to speak. He's going to tell everyone on the planet to take the mark of the beast. 666, what a reversal. What a reversal of the blessing. What a reversal of the blessing. It's an absolute curse. That's why I said, when you really start to dig into this guy, this false prophet, my goodness, I mean, he even seems worse than the Antichrist. Can you even imagine? But we know that the reason why they're both on equal footing is because they're inspired by the dragon himself. That old serpent. Okay. It's a terrible, unholy trinity. It's a terrible, unholy trinity of destruction. My goodness, what a day of trouble. What a day of trouble. What a day of trouble. My goodness, what a day of trouble. You don't want to be around to see these two cats. <laughs> you don't want to be around to see the face of the serpent. You don't want to be around on this day. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't want to be around when these two cats come on the scene, oh no. You don't want to see when the hidden becomes manifested, oh no. You don't want to see when Asher and Naphtali, okay, these two tribes, which have the hidden ones, the 666, you don't want to be around when they're manifested because that day is a day of trouble. Oh no, you don't want to be around to see that day. Lord Jesus, help us to escape. May we be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before you, before your throne, faultless, covered by the blood of the Lamb, because we've overcome by your blood and by the word of our testimony. May we be faithful even unto death if you call us to do so. Help us, Holy Ghost. I just gonna, I was encouraged um, by a fellow uh, member of the body of Christ to, uh, you know, upload a couple of uh, recent um, street evangelisms that I did, just a couple clips that a brother in Christ recorded of me in San Diego. And so I'm just gonna attach that at the end of this video and uh, may it be a blessing and an encouragement to whoever 
uh, sees it. I didn't know I was being recorded, but um, I met the brother after I got done re, uh, um, preaching in the gas lamp, and he sent me these couple clips of me preaching. Um, and so I was encouraged by another member, uh, a mighty woman of God, to uh, share these clips. And so I'm going to share it, and may it bless those who look at it. And I love you, and I pray that this teaching was a blessing to you. Until we meet again, here, there, or in the air, Maranatha, and amen. And he has opened up the book on your life. And he has showed you, week and every time you said no to Jesus. Oh, yeah. You're headed. Oh, yeah. This is what's coming into this generation real, real, real soon. But guess what? There's an escape. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. The Apostle Paul said it like this. Behold, I tell you a mystery. You see, God is consistent. Before the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night, there will be a, has a proven track record. Yes. God said, just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming Woo! Of the Son of Man. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. The